Dr. Roshanara and her team has, uh, you know, uh, collaborated with our primary health center. And I can see the, uh, you know, our learned doctors are here, although in some or the other uh, way we do, uh, you know, collaborate with them, whether it's through our, our own health center or through any other, you know, department. So, uh, pertaining to our Women's Study Center, very briefly, uh, was established in for the, uh, of course, Professor Pam Rajput has been associated with the center uh, since its inception, uh, established in 10th uh, plan uh, period. Uh, you know, the reason uh, why Women's Study Center takes all these, uh, you know, uh, issues or I should say uh, titles for deliberation is because it has a, a particular mandate and the earlier when the center was started it was all you know awareness programs like this you know awareness programs even at the community level then advocacy programs then research programs small small research projects and i'm sure from this particular as somebody said let the proper recommendations come and i will look towards the proper recommendations definitely and wherever we have to, uh, you know, uh, go for the policy implications, definitely we'll go for them. Uh, and I'm sure that this particular topic will not stop over here. It will have different implications and to those implications we'll definitely uh, adhere to and see wherever we can implement them. For the information of our uh, speakers who are with us today, You'll be happy to know that in, uh, you know, the condition in Kashmir Valley and I should say even in JNK UT is not that bad towards the, uh, you know, uh, sexual and reproductive health of women. Uh, one of the main reasons could be education is one of the important tool. Uh, it's not that even in the rural areas now our girls are going for uh, are admitted in schools, they come up to, some come up to college level, basic education, everyone receives. And when you see the structure at the rural areas about the schools, uh, you know, things are uh, moving very nicely and uh, parents are now much more aware. Uh, you know, all of them are not educated, but they are aware that how important it is to give them education. and number one school education number one health care they are aware of that and our doctors play a great role in that our nss volunteers our students the connection with the community not only our university but other universities which have they play a great role in it but i think that the women's study center has got a different role to play and not alone we have number of other departments over here we have social work sociology we have home science, uh, we have department of education, we have department of psychology, you know, together I think they can plan out different activities at grassroots level because ultimately we have to educate them. The upper class, the middle class may raise their voice but we don't know what is happening at the grassroots level. So we have to be uh, aware of that uh, and I'm sure that in future also many such uh, you know, types of deliberations will be done, which are of great, uh, you know, importance. Professor Pam Rajput did share her experience uh, with us at the national and international level. We are with you, ma'am, always, whatever, uh, you know, from Kashmir side you need, always there at your disposal, whatever is to be done. And I'm sure the jointly together all our, you know, good speakers, which we had today, things will move in the right direction and the change will come. The change has, lots of change has come, but much more has to come. Thank you very much. We have scholars in the back of us. We will talk about theory. I will ask you about it, Savita Ji. And theory is very important. For it is a tool for understanding conceptual things, but theory is equally important for what we call as policy advocacy, which is very central to centers for women's studies.
लेकिन इससे पहले कि मैं अपनी बात कहूँ अपने ज़िंदगी के एक्सपीरियंस जो मैंने कुछ किया है यह भी कहना चाहती हूँ कि कल से ट्वेंटी फोर नवम्बर से सोलह दिसंबर तक हम मनाते हैं जिसको व्हाट वी कॉल है सिक्सटीन डेज ऑफ एक्टिविज्म और मेरे ख्याल में वायलेशन ऑफ सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्टिव राइट्स इज एज मच ए वायलेशन राइट इट इज अ वायलेंस अगेंस्ट वेमेन सो वी कैन स्टे दैट इन स्टार्ट ऑफ स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फोर्थ ऑफ नवम्बर वी हैव स्टार्टेड फ्राम ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ नवम्बर दी सिक्सटीन डेज ऑफ एक्टिविज्म सो वैन यू फुट दी रिपोर्ट यू से वी स्टार्टेड विद ये जो इशू है एस आर एच आर जिसको हम शॉर्ट में कहते हैं It is both a global issue as well as a national and local issue. And it be Western Hemisphere, Central Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere. आप अमेरिका में चले जाएं, अफ्रीका में चले जाएं, एशिया में चले जाएं, और एशिया में हिंदू किसी भी कंट्री में चले जाएं. this is a critical issue for women all around so main baat karungi ke global level par kya hua national level par kya hua aur ground reality kya hai aur way forward kya hai i'm going to divide my presentation into these four when we say srhr and as i said it is key to human dignity it's nothing else but a person's right to healthy body autonomy education health care sexual health and all that my friends will talk i leave it at that end but i do want to share having been part of the global movement that 90s 90s was a period known of conferences for women and rights of women we began with the anna convention where we struggled hard and whatever i am sh sharing in the south is all to which i have been personally a party i have contributed it. so vienna mein jaane se pehle hindustan mein hindustan se pehle asia pacific mein hum khoob अपना बात किया स्ट्रेटजी बनाया एडवोकेसी किया फॉर वट टू बी कंसिडर्ड एज वुमेंस राइट्स आर ह्यूमन राइट्स ऑफ कोर्स दिस फ्रेज वैन हिलरी क्लिंटन अटर एट द एन जी ओ फोरम ऑफ हुआरू दैट इज द फोर्थ वर्ल्ड कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन वुमेन पीपल यूजली एसोशिएट विद दैट बट इफ यू लुक एट दियाना कन्वेंशन एंड द कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन द आउटकम you will find these words over there we struggle for that women's rights are human right lekin uske aage chale jab hum vienna ke immediately baad hui what we call as international conference on population and development icpd and i want to share with this house how much women had to struggle in that conference to see to it that the sexual reproductive health and rights are included in that how much struggle it is well documented but i just want to say that that women struggle very very hard because there was so much of opposition there was so much of acrimony to the acceptance of this fact women rights health rights reproductive rights of all the things right so there was opposition but we succeeded and that success of icpd laid the you know pathway for the next conference and that was the fourth world conference on women and development where health was 
one of the major issues, one of the 12 critical areas, and health includes reproductive health over there. Because time wouldn't permit me to go into the detail, but I want to share with you. In 2000, UN General Assembly special session was held. And in that UN General Assembly session, on Beijing plus five, it is known as UNGASS, held in June 2000. I was one of the representatives from Asia Pacific. There were other regions also, one, one from each region. I had the privilege to represent the women of Asia Pacific region and speak in that UN General Assembly. जहाँ से आप देखते हैं ना, जब टीवी देखते हैं तो वो ग्रीन सा पत्थर वाला और वहाँ पे खड़े हमारे प्रधानमंत्री बोल रहे होते हैं या और बोल रहे होते सरकारें हमें भी मौका मिला वहाँ से बोलने का। But what I want to share with you is, as I was sitting on the sidelines when my turn was to come, there was another young lady sitting over there. I'll call her young, sitting over there, and she had tears in her eyes. I walked to her few steps because I remember that face in the ICPD, and that woman was nothing, none else than Nafisa Sadiq. Nafisa Sadiq was the Secretary General of the ICPD, and she was going to talk to me before. So, she was in her eyes. So, I said, Nafisa Ji, what is the matter? Your eyes are in your eyes. She didn't know me, I knew her. And she turned to me, she said, you know, and she turned to me, she said, you know, all that effort we made, now they are trying to see all that we gained is demolished. Itni zabardast jo hai global level pe, itni zabardast lobby hoti hai women rights ke khilaf, particularly from the right wing forces, be it the Roman Catholic, you know, Vatican, they also would oppose, and the other, all right wing people would. So they did not want अब ये आ गया है इसको कैसे फिर भी जो है सक्सेसफुल ना होने दें तो उसकी कोशिश में थे कि जो दिया गया उसको कैसे जो हटा जाए एंड सो शी एट इयर्स इन हर आई एंड लो एंड बिहोल्ड ओनली कपल ऑफ इयर्स बैक व्हेन वी वर एट द एस कैप यू नो लाइक यू हैव यूएन यू हैव रीजनल कमिशंस एंड फॉर द एशिया पैसिफ in this region commission, every year the meeting takes place. And let me tell you before that, another this thing, and that is sustainable development goals, which were adopted in September 2015. Those are 15 May of sustainable development goals adopt way, right? Or bahut badi uh, meeting, the all heads of the states gathered in, in, in New York to celebrate that. And you know what we were saying at that time in the, you know, side corridors. When General Assembly was discussion ho rahi thi, again there was opposition to SRHR. But no, it was discussion on the issues pe, on the whole sustainable development goals. Pe, itni jada discussion ho gayi ke time reh gaya short or chair ne kaha jo marji ho mujhe to aaj isko adopt karwana hai, right? Wo adopt karwana hai. So in the, I would call it fluke, I always call it by fluke. So the sustainable goal five hai aapka, on gender equality and empowerment of women, jis mein ek target SRHR hai aapka, agar aap dekhenge, wo target jo tha, wo phir us shor mein ke hona hai, pass, 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 wo pass ho gaya. So even the sustainable development goal, SDG five, right, has that target on SRHR. See the kind of struggle we have to make. See the kind of advocacy we have to make. All those issues that we discuss here in our classrooms and in our research papers, we must remember that also the contribution of, in fact, I have been thinking of, we usually talk about women and women in, uh, you know, uh, international diplomacy. And when it comes to women in international diplomacy, we only think of the role that women ambassadors play over there. We never think of, the, these women who are not formal ambassadors, but the kind of advocacy and the role they play in getting what you have before us. So that was 2015. But only a couple of years back, in the ASCAP, as I was mentioning to you, 
and there was a resolution to be passed from the Asia Pacific region on the situation of this. And lo and behold, again, there was a position in that whole resolution where two, three lines were sexual reproductive rights. There was a position on that. None other than Russia was opposing that. 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 And with that, the other right-wing countries were with that. We said that. But again, probably it is in the history of ASCAP for the first time, usually things are passed unanimously. The person who was chairing the session was a Filipino woman. She stood on this thing. She said, I am not going to let this go. If you want to oppose, you oppose. Let there be voting. So for the first time, for the first time I saw in the house, right, our secretary at that time, Preeti Sudan was the secretary. We were sitting, we were sitting together, and we were laughing. For the first time, there was voting, right? And of course, naturally, there were few people who were opposing, and the resolution was through. But what I want to say is that even if we have these, these things, and then we have, of course, you know, these are conventions, but we have covenants which are binding on the states which have ratified. And I want to make a reference to International Covenant on Social and Political Rights, International Covenant on uh, Social, Cultural, and Economic Rights, Civil and Political Rights, and also CEDA for that matter. All these conventions consider right to reproductive health as a fundamental human right of the women. CEDA initially, when it was drafted, it was drafted way back in 1979. And Article 12, which deals with health, you see, they considered health as a you know, uh, right, but not included SRHR. Now, the issues that are not there, they are later on taken on what is known as general recommendation. Now, we have done a general recommendation for recently national consultation. In that, we had our Nilofar Khan Ji chief guest. And you will remember that we have talked about a recommendation. That is recommendation 24. This recommendation relates to general, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the article of CEDA. CEDA is nothing else. Convention, those young friend boys who do not know this term, CEDA's Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And health is one of the critical issues over there. Article 12 deals with that health issue. So, usme kyunke reproductive rights mentioned nahi the, to uske baad CEDA ne ek nahi adopt kiya recommendation, which is recommendation 24. Those who are working, they can go and look up at the language. So. The states which have ratified, in, including India, India ratified in 1993. So India is bound by that you know, convention and gives for that matter. So all these initiatives have been there as far as the global is concerned. Now coming to, you know, I wanted to just say that this struggle is not only limited, this struggle is in every place and every country. Mein hai. So coming to, um, the national level, I have a lot of time left, I will be less and less short. That SRHR on the face of it, it is recognized in India. As such, no statement comes to me, right? Except that we have MTP Act. But you know that when we call, talk about SRHR, it relates to your reproductive rights, right? whom to have sex with, whom not to have sex with, and all those things are concerned, including abortion. My friends, uh, uh, Savita Singhji or uh, Rakesh Esperoshni, darling it. But what I want to say is that in Hindustan, mein iski, uh, as such on the face of it, opposition na hote hue bhi opposition hai. Aur wo kahan hai? Ye jo hai aapke social, cultural, and structural barriers that are there that continue to be there. So there is a social stigma. I was talking to my friend. There social stigma around the sexual reproductive health rights. And for that matter, there are harmful cultural practices. Norms are there and, you know, which kind of put a kind of a vo silence, wall of silence, you know, on the, and uh, these may, you may say, these may relate to uh, your men I can begin with your menstrual hy hy hygiene for that matter. 
कि अब इसके भी अब शुरू हुआ है इतने सालों बाद कि आपकी कोई ऐड आनी शुरू हुई है वो हमारा फिल्म स्टार जो है अक्षय खान ने फिल्म भी बना दी है उसके ऊपर तो थोड़ा सा वो लेकिन अभी भी स्कूलों में बच्चे उन दोनों स्कूल छोड़ते हैं ड्रॉप अप मतलब उन दोनों नए स्कूल आते हैं बिकॉज यू डोंट है वन इज स्टिगमा राइट और स्टिगमा इस हद तक है कि हिमाचल प्रदेश अगर देखें आप जो ये एस जेंडर इंडेक्स आता है एस का जो जेंडर इंडेक्स द्वितीय योग बनाता है उसमें केरला और अदर स्टेट्स के बाद हिमाचल प्रदेश जो है इज़ परफॉर्मिंग वेल ऑन ह्यूमन दिस थिंग बट वैन इट कम्स टू दीज राइट्स कैन यू इमेजिन इवन टुडे इफ यू गो टू द अपर हिल्स राइट तो वेन ए वन इज मैंट्रेटिंग उसको घर में रहने की इजाज़त नहीं है बाहर जहाँ गाय बकरी वगैरह पालते हैं वहाँ पर उन दिनों वहाँ पर उसको रहना पड़ता है सी दी काइंड ऑफ यू नो द काइंड ऑफ नॉर्म दैट वी है और ये नहीं राजस्थान में कैन यू बीट इट आई रेड लॉन्ग टाइम बैक दैट वैन ए गर्ल इज मैरिड एंड यू नो आप राजस्थान में या तो चाइल्ड मैरिज है या अडल्ट मैरिज है बहुत जल्दी होती है बट वैन दी मैरिज टेक प्लेस द गर्ल हैज टू ब्लीड द फर्स्ट नाइट टू प्रूव हर वर्जिनिटी शी हैज टू ब्लीड द फर्स्ट नाइट नहीं तो क्या होगा उस लड़की को घर जाएगी या उसके माम माँ बाप जो हैं उसका मुआवजा देंगे कि हम इतने लाख रुपए आपको देते हैं हमारी बेटी को अपने घर रख लीजिए सो द काइंड ऑफ प्रैक्टिस यू नो वी हैव इन इंडिया दे दे आर जस्ट टेरिबल एंड इट इज स्टिल यू नो लॉन्ग वे वी हैव टू गो आई अबॉर्शन की बात दैट इज अ मेजर इशू यू नो इवन अमेरिका इट्स अ मेजर इशू द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका हैज इन वैलिडेटेड काइंड ऑफ जजमेंट लॉन्ग टाइम मेड इन फेवर ऑफ अबॉर्शन राइट एंड नाउ इट इज इट्स अगेन एंड दे आर स्ट्रगलिंग वेमेन आर स्ट्रगलिंग एवरी मंथ दे मीड वर्ड दे कॉल एज वुमेन मार्च ऑन दिस इशू इन डिफरेंट स्टेट्स ओवर दे एंड इन अवर कंट्री ऑफकोर्स अबॉर्शन इज परमिटेड राइट under circumstances and it goes to again i would say it's it's very um, progressive step that mtp was amended in the year 1921 is that right samta ji 1921 aur uska scope jo hai aur enlarge kar diya gaya hai right specially rule 3b jo hai usme badi categories ke log jo hai abortion ke liye kar diya gaya hai but when you do the actual analysis right it is what the supreme court itself has said is a kind of doctor centric legislation doctor agar keh dega ki ha ye 22 se 24 week jo kar diye hai abortion ho sakti hai karwai ja sakti hai to abortion hogi nahi to nahi abortion hogi and i want to you know take the opportunity to share with you one of the recent cases our judiciary at times has been very very uh, progressive i would say in giving judgments in favor of women and this is one of the most progressive judgment i would say that has been given by the supreme court only in the year 2022 what did the court say and in this case the court admitted the abortion by an unmarried girl unmarried woman keh lijiye unmarried girl keh lijiye and the court recognized a reproductive and decisional autonomy as essential to the realization of fundamental human rights that is how broadly it said and the court said it is the right of every woman to make reproductive choices deprivation of access to reproductive health care or emotional and physical well being also injures the dignity of women now this is the name of the case is x versus principal secretary health family welfare uh, department and another and in this case this unmarried girl when she came to know that she was pregnant right she approached that she want to you know about the child was not allowed doctors didn't give her the that certificate so she went to the high court 
High Court also did not permit that. And finally, she went to the Supreme Court. And uh, High Court said it is just not you know, unmarried women because the law talks about married women. Unmarried women are not included, so we cannot permit that. But when the case went to the court, Supreme Court, the bench of three judges, headed by none other than Justice Chandra Chud. Chandra Chud is giving Rakesh just wonderful judgments of late. I think we, the Women's Study Center really need to take off this. So what did Chandra Chud say? He said that a changed social context demands readjustment of laws. Laws must not remain static and its interpretation should keep in mind the changing social context and advance the cause of social justice. And the, uh, you know, judge further said, let me quote from what has been said, that uh, a change social context demands a readjustment of laws. That is one. And then the court also said that every pregnant person in India has a right to reproductive decisional autonomy, including transgender and gender variant persons. So expanding, you know, from unmarried to this thing, to transgender, gender variant persons, everyone is entitled to reproductive health, including access to safe, effective, and affordable methods, family planning, access to contraception, and sex education. Sex education is another issue on which there is so much of controversy. And the right people thinking people, they just don't want right sex education to be introduced at all. That is another issue we can talk uh, later. So what I'm trying to say is that this very ruling that has come from uh, this landmark judgment regarding reproductive and decennial autonomy is, will go a long way as manifestation of one's sexual and reproductive health and the court recognizes the structural barrier that are there, including caste discrimination. They refer to that also. Not only sex, caste discrimination, poverty, etc. It's a privilege to be here and uh, I'm happy that Center for Women's Studies have broken the put few shackles in the uh, societal norms when we talk of, when we are shying away from talking about the sexual or the productive to health of women. They have taken a lead to talk about this today at this workshop where we have listened to the learned speakers like Pam Rajput and uh, Professor Lakish and Professor Savita. When I was working in University Grants Commission. I was looking after women's studies centers. And when we closed all the schemes of the 12th plan was over in UGC. And uh, we closed all the schemes. But uh, after half an hour, my chairman called me and talked with that Mr. Mead, have we closed the women's studies centers also? I said, yes, we have closed all schemes, including the women's studies center. And he in a, told me that within five minutes, issue new circular that accept uh, women's studies and HRDC because HRDC is a part of uh, University Grants Commission that all stand closed except the women's study centers throughout the country. And uh, these centers are going on in, the, in, 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 all, in most of the universities in the country and fortunately our, in our university the women's study center grew and it was incubated by only the woman who is heading the University of Kashmir at present, Professor Nilofar Khan, she was the founder director of Women's Studies Center and we see that at present this center has grown up to this level that we are we where we provide now the post graduation courses in the Women's Studies Center. And uh, University of Kashmir is uh, at present, uh, we all know that uh, almost 65% Girls students are of uh, constituting of the females only in the University of Kashmir, and under her leadership, we try to uh, uh, try to do our best 
to uh, familiarize, to educate, to, uh, to, to give our best for the women education in the UT of j &K. structures that she had talked about, including SEDA, including Millennium Development Goals, then that turned into Sustainable Development Goals. There's a whole history, there's a whole discourse of how the Millennium Development Goals turned into Sustainable Development Goals. I'm not going to go into that, I have limited time. I'm just trying to give you a framework of talking about sexual health and reproductive rights of women and that this will extend to all genders. There are going to be two steps in this and the theories then change. That is why I'm sort of trying to be clear from the beginning. So the human rights uh, of women basically were the outcomes of the consciousness of liberal uh, order, the liberal uh, feminists. And then in the beginning, the first phase, they fought uh, with patriarchy through the assertion of equality of rights. And that was wonderful. That did achieve uh, a lot for women. You know, it opened education for them. It opened political participation for them. It opened also um, some semblance of rather good health for them because they were all formulated in terms of rights. But the practice remained patriarchal. And the rights themselves, I would say, uh, were to redeem certain kind of harshness of expressed in terms of injustice and inequality and violence towards women. It helped at the beginning. But soon it was realized that the formal nature of rights. All rights in the world basically have a formal structure. Even the constitution, the rights and liberties that we have, they are formal in nature, that is to say, they are judiciable. That is to say, we can take certain uh, practices of deep inequality to the court in the name of justice or being violated. And we can get some redress from that. Right? But it was found that then the socialist feminists came along in India as well as in Europe and in America. And they said that actually the real problem is not just the violent uh, governing of female sexuality and body by men. It is also, it is importantly about the nature of private property. It is a bit harsh to say that the origin of patriarchy is linked with the origin of private and property, property, property right. So today, if men control the sexuality or the sexual health and reproductive health of women, it is because women are still their property. And more than women, children are going to be born because they are going to be the inheritors of this private property. Mamla itna complex hai ki isko sujhane mein bhi kitna samay lagega I do not know. But this is how it is. It is indeed an honor and proud privilege for me to extend a very warm welcome to you all on behalf of CWSR, University of Kashmir, in the inaugural function of two days national seminar being organized by our department in collaboration with NCW, National Commission for Women, New Delhi, on the theme, Social Cultural Dimensions of Sexual and Reproductive Health of Women in Kashmir. This seminar is the third collaborative effort of CWSR and NCW, New Delhi, on a very vital issue that matters most to their women uh, as the mission of both the organizations, NCW and our department, is advocating the cause of women and empowering them through advocacy and awareness. About the seminar, I would just like to give just a brief description. Uh, today, 
this seminar uh, that we are uh, just organizing is designed to serve as a platform for scholars, activists, healthcare professionals, for, and policy makers to engage in substantive discussions and exchange insights on the social cultural determinants impacting sexual and reproductive health of women in Kashmir. Employing an interdisciplinary approach, this seminar will aim at the, just to delve into the social cultural uh, menaces that we are, women are facing in Kashmir. Again, all the uh, paper presenters, uh, I, I would like to mention here that we have got a good participation of all the paper presenters from all over the country, and I can mention only few. We have got good participation from AMU, Aligarh Muslim University, Jamia Milia, and even from the Central University of Hyderabad, and other parts of the country, and uh, various colleges as well. This seminar will feature a series of panel discussions, paper presentations, and interactive sessions. Eminent scholars and practitioners specializing in women's health, anthropology, and related fields will be invited to share their findings in the coming discourse. Engaged in thought provoking, this seminar will be engaging in thought provoking discussions during our two technical sessions, where we will just discuss all the issues and the challenges that our women in Kashmir are facing in the context of this, this their productive health. And also we'll be adopting the strategies how to move forward. The recommendations of the seminar will be, uh, inshallah, put forward, submitted uh, in a uh, uh, formal form to our honorable vice chancellor, whom, inshallah, we hope she takes uh, due action for what better she, she is doing for the welfare and for the betterment of women of Kashmir. It is very pertinent to mention here that our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Madam, she is not only concerned with the women in the campus or with the academia, but she is equally concerned with the women of Valley, where they are, whether they are going to be the entrepreneurs, whether they are going to be in academia, they are going to be in the physical field, and especially she is more concerned with the upliftment of the marginalized section of our society, which is always women. And uh, this uh, today's session will be followed. Uh, we will be having after tea break one uh, technical session, and inshallah tomorrow again technical session, and then a poster presentation by our students, where uh, the students from Home Sense also are participating, and they have just uh, drawn good sketches that re reflect that uh, they are very much concerned and very deep in this theme. I will not take much of the time. Thank you very much, and welcome all. Thank you, sir.